Hi everyone, welcome to another ATP review. Today I'm going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Okay, before I go into the whys and wherefores and how good or bad this is and why I bought it and what it does for me, just want to explain that I'm in neither camp really. I'm not in an Android camp, I'm not in the Apple camp, I'm not a fanboy of either. Um, what I do is just buy stuff that I need that I think is going to suit the purpose. And just to prove that, that I'm not in either camp, this is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 from 2013. Also got the Samsung Galaxy S7, which is still a really good phone. Samsung Galaxy S4, Apple iPad Mini 4, iPod 6 Touch, an old iPod Touch 4G, the iPod Shuffle, I think this was called, it's tiny. And then you've got the one no one can forget, the, uh, the Apple Embryo. Anyway, onto the Galaxy Note 9. This is a beast. Now, I'll let you know that I don't buy phones, even though this would kind of say otherwise, but I don't buy phones all that often. These date back five, six years now. So I only get one when my, pretty much when my contract runs out with whatever provider I'm with. And every two years, I'll look to see what's on the market. If there's something really good coming up, I'll wait. If there's something good out at the moment, when my contract is coming for renewal, I'll by that one. Now, I was at a bit of a quandary this time because literally about three weeks before my contract was due to run out, the Note 9 was released and I looked at it and thought, looks fantastic, but a few weeks later, Apple were going to actually uh, introduce their new iPhone. So I thought, do I wait? Do I buy this? Are Apple gonna release something pretty cool? But after looking at this and after reading the reviews and the, the early kind of pre-reviews, it looked amazing. So. I bit the bullet and bought it. I know it's a lot of money, but for what I do in my business, this is a phenomenal piece of kit. Everything to do with this is brilliant. Now, there are a couple of quirky things that I don't particularly like, never going to use. Um, so I'll come to those in a bit, bit free. Um, but what I will do is show the stuff that I like and what I think you might like as well. Now, all of these other things here, they all have a purpose for me. I use them for music. I use them for flying my drone. I used some of the tablets for, for work. I leave some in the office here, some at my office at home. Um, so a lot of this still actually gets used, believe it or not, for different purposes. But this almost negates the need for any of those. It's just phenomenal. Now, I'll go through things one by one. So let's start with the actual phone itself, how it handles and the look and feel. This phone is big for a lot of people. I've got fairly big hands, but it's still actually quite a big phone. And I didn't know whether I'd get used to it or not. I didn't know if I'd like it. But it turns out this fits in my back pocket, fits in my front pocket, fits in my jacket pocket, fits in my hand pretty well. This is a really, really good phone. Obviously, the phone comes in lots of, or a few different colours. I always go for the black phones. I, I just like them. I think they, they look a bit more classy. They look pretty good. I don't really care that much about the colour because I always put a case on it. In this case, I've got the, the Spigen case. It's the, the tough case. I can't remember the name of it but it always covers the phone anyway, so I'm not really bothered. That's why I haven't even bothered taking the sticker off the back. Plus having this on gives it a bit of extra grip, which means I can hold it a bit better. It makes it a bit bigger, but it still makes it slightly easier to hold. Let's talk about the phone itself. A lot of people talk about the fact that the fingerprint sensor has moved on the back and it's gone from next to the lens to below. A lot of people say it's not low enough and the effort of having to raise your finger to actually hit the button. It's so much aggro, so I can see where those people are coming from. But in all seriousness, <laughs> it's there. So I can just put my hand on it and it works. It's almost instantaneous. Some people say it's a bit slow. I mean, what are you gonna do with that half a nanosecond that you're missing out on because it doesn't open the minute you think about it? Also, what's great, I think, is the face recognition and iris scanner. So I'll show you how quick it is. Let's just turn this on and it's in straight away. People say that's slow as well. I mean, how quick do you want it? Let's do it again, and it's in. Now, it also works, I wear glasses sometimes, so it works when I'm wearing glasses. So for me, both ways are as quick as I need. I'm not gonna think, oh, I'm so stressed, I need to get this work done, and I've, I've just lost half a nanosecond, but then I've just spent another five minutes complaining about it, so bleh. Turning the phone on, it's a breeze. It's really quick, very, very good. I can find that sensor every single time, and I'll tell you why. Having a case on the back actually helps because it indents it slightly in the back so I can just slide straight up, straight to it every time. On the side here, you've got the volume rockers um, up and down. The Bixby button, everyone's talked about it. It's crap. Uh, you can't reassign it unless you buy, you download an app, um, but I wouldn't trust that. I don't really want to do that. 
I have hit it a few times by mistake. When I first got the phone, I was trying to turn the volume down. Bixby came on asking what I wanted, so I've now turned the voice off. So it does kind of come on, but I don't use it. Um, oh, just came up with on. See, now it's, I don't use Bixby. I can't see myself standing in a bus queue full of school kids and saying, Bixby, play One Direction. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, then you've got the speakers on here are amazing. I'll come to those a bit later, but uh, you've now got stereo speakers either side. And when you turn on the Dolby Atmos, it's just brilliant, brilliant sound, really clear. Yep, you would definitely use those because they're loud enough. They're really loud, really clear, good bass, good resonance, really, really good tone. And the nice thing is you can actually adjust all of that and we'll come to that again. In fact, let's talk about that now quickly. There's one setting in here where you can actually uh, you can set the audio and the, the volume levels based on your own personal hearing. So you start it running and it will tell you, it will ask you to press yes or no if you can hear a very low pitched or high pitched um, kind of sound. And every time you can't hear it, you hit no. Every time you can hear it, you hit yes. And you do it in a very dark room with headphones on. And eventually it will completely configure all of the audio based on your hearing abilities. And then when you put headphones on, listen to music, it's awesome. The sound is absolutely clear, it's beautiful. So again, a really nice touch with this. Then on the bottom, you've got headphone jack, fantastic. I buy headphones that are Bluetooth and wired capability. So if I'm on a long journey and I've run out of power in the headphones, I can still plug them in and run off the power of the phone. And then you've got the USB-C port on the bottom. Then we come to the wonderful S Pen. Now, if you hold the button down and you've got this in your hand, if it, a long press, will actually activate the camera and double click will turn it round to the front facing camera so you can do your selfies. Another double click and it'll go back to the other way. Then you just push once to take a photo, turn it round again, take a photo and then turn it back again. So it's pretty good for that. Uh, if you like doing selfies and putting the camera down, uh, putting the phone down and taking group shots, that kind of thing, it's pretty cool. It will also allow you to scroll through presentation so if you hook this up to a screen or a monitor you can actually use this for a presentation and just click through all the slides that kind of thing uh, you can use it to start and pause music various things you can do but the turning on where I've just started the camera you can actually assign any of the apps for that so if I wanted to use Photoshop regularly I can actually hold that down and it will open Photoshop or it'll open the gallery it'll open Word it'll open Bixby it'll open any app you've got on your phone it will last for about 30 minutes on standby if you just left it on the table. Um, I've never found that I've run out of charge with it for the things that I do. Um, but once you put it back in its cradle and back into the phone, either way, it's compatible. You don't have to put it in a certain way. It will take a maximum of 40 seconds, I think it is, to, to charge back to 100%. Just brilliant. Really, really good. Even if the battery goes, you can still use it on the phone. You just can't use the, the Bluetooth functionality. So really really good and there's lots of things I actually use the S Pen for um, one of the best things if the phone's off you can just take this out and you have a black screen so then you just take notes and I actually use this quite a lot so let's say I've got a few days of being really busy coming up and I've got a lot of things to do I will actually make a list of eight nine or ten things on the phone pin it to the home screen and then I every time I look at the phone with the screen off I can see what I've got to do for that day or that week and I can just cross them off as I go so yeah, that's kind of the external workings of the phone. Now let's go through the other things. So first of all, the battery. The battery is incredible. It's a 4,000 milliamp battery. Um, I've not really run out of charge. I'm a, I wouldn't say I'm a power user. I'm not on it all day, every day, but I do use it quite a bit. I use it for doing my websites when I'm not at home. Um, I, I take lots of photos, lots of videos. Uh, in fact, that's probably the thing I use the phone for most, being a photographer and filmmaker. I take photos and videos everywhere with this. Videos on these are brilliant now. The, the stills are brilliant. I'll come to those again in a second. But the, the battery just lasts and lasts and lasts. So next, the screen. Now, I think the screen's incredible. Uh, it's really, really good. Uh, the, the quality on here is absolutely superb. It's, it's a, a huge, uh, super bright. I think it's, uh, I can't remember how many nits it is, but regardless, using outside and bright sunlight, you can still see the screen really clearly. And the quality, the, the pixel quality, the image quality when you're watching films or homemade videos or whatever, it's absolutely outstanding. It's really, really good. So going back to Apple quickly, the new iPhone X Max, XS Max, um, I think has a 6.5 inch screen. This has got a 6.4 inch. 
not a massive difference. There's nothing to write home about the difference between the two. They're both really, really good screens. I think this is a bit better from everything I've read and heard. You don't have the notch. Okay, so apparently that's a trendy thing, but it annoys me. Can't see the point of that. And also when you're in the camera, obviously you've got the bezels either side or whatever they are. Um, but with this, you can actually take the camera to full screen and then you can actually double press to get rid of that. So you actually get full resolution screen. Now staying with the camera for a second, um, like I said, I probably use this phone, well, obviously phone calls and things, but I use it a lot for video and for stills photography. And when I first got the phone, first thing I did was went out in Weymouth uh, for the day and I wanted to take photos and video in daytime, in bright sunlight, and also at night time when it had gone completely dark. I wanted to test it, to see exactly what it's like. Obviously, I know it's not gonna to compare to my normal cameras, um, but obviously if I'm gonna be taking it to concerts and things, I wanna know that it's pretty good. Um, and I wasn't disappointed, it's really, really good. The stills are brilliant. The rear camera's 12 megapixel, you've got two lenses. Um, one lens is just your standard lens, the other one's a two time zoom, and it works brilliantly. Not had it before on a phone, and having the ability to actually zoom in two times, it's brilliant, it's, it's really good. What I've done, had to do before, is take the photo and then crop in post-production, lose resolution. You don't actually lose any resolution, it's a optical zoom on this, not a digital zoom. During the day, stills were really good, crystal clear, lovely, lovely quality, really good shots. When I got to dusk, um, if there was light, such as the, the fun fair, it was great. So I've still got that light um, illuminating the sensor. It worked really well. Again, beautiful crystal clear shots, really nice. Um, touch of noise coming in when it gets a bit darker. And then obviously when it gets really dark, uh, you, you lose a lot of quality. You get a lot of grain or noise coming in. Um, and the quality suffers a little bit. Um, and but again, I don't use phones in the pitch black. I, I like light, so um, you can go to pro mode and you can set the shutter speed really low. You can put this on a tripod, you can go that route. Um, but generally, I don't tend to take many photos in the dark anyway. If there's lights, if you're at a club or a disco or you're at a concert, fantastic, looks really good. And you can see from the photos I took at a fun fair that it's actually, again, beautifully crystal clear. If you need to run it through some software like Neat Image, you can actually do that and get rid of the grain, but generally it's, it's really good. The video is just amazing. You can shoot 4K at 60p. Now, a lot of the new DSLRs or mirrorless cameras that are coming out at the moment aren't even including that. The GH5 I'm using at the moment does shoot 4K 60p. It means you can slow it down two to two and a half times in post-production and it'll look fantastic. You can do the same with this. When it gets to evening, it's not as good as the stills, but I will say when I was filming again at the fun fair, the quality was really good. As long as you've got light coming in, you're not having to use really high ISOs, it's not straining, the, the, the sensor's not struggling to get that light, so it still looks really good. But the minute I took it away from light and it was really starting to get dark, and I was trying to get shots of the beach, it's really mushy, as you'd expect. It's a phone, it's dark, you're not going to get great shots. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. But in daytime, dusk, and things like fun fairs and concerts, it's going to be superb. For someone of my age uh, that came from having to use old still film cameras, it's just phenomenal. You kids don't know how lucky you've got it. <laughs> it's just brilliant. You've got everything on there for a photographer could want. Automatic mode. So when you put it on just full auto, it's great. Um, it seems to work really well with uh, auto white balance. The focusing's quick. Um, the the lighting's good, the dynamic range is really good, and it generally works really well. Then you've got live focus, which I think is good. You can see on these shots that I took of my daughter that it will take a, multiple, a multitude of photos, or it will take a few photos, and then you can adjust the focus afterwards. Now, obviously the iPhone were saying it's fantastic on their new phone that came out after this one, saying how good it was, but Samsung have been doing it for a couple of years now. Um, but it's a really good feature. I didn't think it would work that well. I thought you may get some anomalies in the, in the background, but on the photos I've taken so far, as long as you're careful, it just looks amazing. And it's, to get that kind of bokeh, bokeh, whatever you want to call it, uh, the blurred background, it's been a, a real thing in the past. To, to, you know, it's a, a, been a, I've had to teach people how to do it with cameras and now it does it for you. I'm kind of redundant, but it's, it's brilliant. So you can get really nice portraits with this on, on that mode and it does work but you just have to be careful and take a few shots uh, because sometimes you will get half the photo out of focus in the background and part of it in focus. So you need to make sure you're holding it steady and get the shot right. Then you've got the pro mode, which is really good. This is where you can really start tweaking. 
Um, you can you, you start shooting in RAW, which is good. You get a lot more dynamic range, a lot more things you can do in post-processing. You can bring back the, the shadows, uh, you can bring back the highlights uh, a bit more. So pro mode, if you're, I'd only use pro mode if I'm actually, um, I've got time on my hands. So if I'm out doing landscapes, uh, or I'm, I'm just generally taking my time, I'd use pro mode because I can set all the parameters myself. Um, but there's too much to do to, to be a point and shoot snappy camera. So if you're going to just be out and about snapping stuff, auto is definitely good enough. If you want to take your time and get some really cracking landscapes that can be put on the wall, then obviously stick to pro mode and shoot in raw, do a bit of processing. Panorama works really well. I've tried that a couple of times. It seems to stitch really well. You can't see the, the, the joins. Um, yeah, really chuffed with that. I'll use that loads when I'm out and about. Definitely, definitely will use that one. Hyperlapse. <laughs> For me to get a hyperlapse in the past, I've had to walk along with a DSLR, taking a photo every two steps, put the camera down on the tripod, make sure it's lined up, take a shot, move forward, lay, <laughs> put the camera down, use the crosshairs to keep my point on, it, on something in the screen. And it, I think it took to get a 12 second clip it took me about two hours using this phone with something like this which I'm going to be reviewing next uh, it's a stabilizer for the phone and I'll, I'll come to that I researched those a hell of a lot before I bought that one and I'll come to that soon uh, or I'll come to it in the next video um, but having a stabilizer with this and the features of that that that's got I can select on the camera the part I want to stay focused on and then just literally walk towards it and then what took me two hours before I reckon with this, I could do in about 10 minutes, if not less. So again, you don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> this is brilliant. So Hyperlapse looks really cool when you get it right. It's great fun. And if you're out traveling, if you're on holiday, you can do some great hyperlapses. And it just really adds some real pizzazz to your stuff that you show your friends and family. Probably my favorite bit of the camera is the slow motion mode and the super slow motion mode. It's just brilliant. At 720p, which is the old HD, still pretty good but you can do 960 frames a second it's quite hard to actually get right because with super slow-mo uh, there's there's a couple of ways of doing it so you're filming normally and then every now and again you'll hit the slow motion button even though it's only 0.4 seconds that it will film for, that equates to 12 seconds of playback slow motion video. Brilliant. You wouldn't need much more than that. Um, you've also got a slightly smaller version of uh, 0.2 of a second, which gives you about six seconds of playback. The other mode is, let's go back to super slow-mo. You're given a square on the screen there. And what happens is, as soon as something moves in front of that square, it will start activating the slow motion. Now you think that as you go past it, by the time it's activated, your hand's gone past and you've missed the slow-mo. But I found out that it works, through my testing, that it works on kind of a buffer thing. Now it's nothing new because I had a Sony video camera in 2006 that had the same thing. Wherever you pointed the camera, it was, even though you hadn't pressed record, it was always recording into the buffer. And the minute you hit the button, it would then stop recording and give you the playback of the previous couple of seconds. And I think this does exactly the same from my tests. So I was actually dropping something onto a, a chair to see if it bounced. And obviously it went past the square and I thought it's gonna go past and miss the slow motion. But as you can actually see, it started recording going in super slow motion before it even hit the screen on playback. So it works really well, it's very intuitive. Then you've got the standard slow motion, which is, goes down to a paltry 240 frames a second or 120 frames a second. So it's really good. But the thing with that section is um, you can actually film indefinitely. You don't just get 0.4 seconds. You can actually just keep filming and filming and filming in slow motion, get as much as you like, and it plays back super slow. Now, just going back to the power of the phone, the, the, the processor and the memory and everything, um, I did say in the, in the start of the video that I use the... Uh, the iPad mini 4 for flying my Inspire One drone and when I first got it it was super quick it was there was no lag there was no cutout no blackouts um, and it would just work perfectly but as time progresses this is why I've got new stuff this is why I have to keep buying tech because as the DJI app for the phone kind of evolved and they put new features on and uh, 
got rid of bugs and things like that. It obviously needed more processing power. So this has actually started to lag a bit and I get some blackouts. So if I'm flying, I'm trying to film something and, and do some nice turns and stuff and the screen will just go black for maybe a, a split second or for a second, then it comes back and I don't know if I've, got the, if I've got the shot. So it's a real pain. So I don't really use that much anymore, but using this, it's as smooth as you like, no lags, no blackouts. It just happens to, it just works. And again, you've got a really bright screen. It's light, you can use it as your phone. You've got your, because um, I don't have any connectivity with this unless I actually use my phone to use as a hotspot. So if I haven't got a signal, I haven't got my phone with me, I, I can't reload maps or anything. Beauty of using this is big screen, bright screen, super fast processor, no blackouts, no lag, um, and it just works perfectly with the app. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is Samsung DeX, D-E-X. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but it's very good, it's very useful. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Note 8 had DeX, but you needed to buy a, an external peripheral uh, to actually make it work. But what it does is turns your phone pretty much into, I can't call it a phone, it's a, it's a pocket PC. And it will turn it into a PC. You can link it up to a screen and a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse. And the screen will actually become a, a touchpad. So let's just have a quick look at that. Before I go any further, I just wanted to show you a couple of things. I don't know if you can see this, let's adjust the focus a bit. But you can add some really cool apps to your phone. <laughs> actually uh, really nice kind of 3D effects for your backgrounds. If I turn the phone off, you can actually add a video, 15 second looping video to your, your lock screen, which is pretty cool. Anyway, like I said, you can use a Bluetooth mouse, Bluetooth keyboard and the phone with a HD screen. So all you need to do is get your cable, which is a USB-C to HDMI, Plug it into the phone, hopefully it's gonna connect automatically. Doing its thing, and there we go. So we're now connected to the screen. Um, so you can see it's like having a, a PC. Let's just get rid of this bit of the screen. To do that, obviously I haven't got a mouse today. So we just bring this down. It says Samsung DeX, use your phone as a touchpad. Uh, before I do that quickly, you can actually use the Samsung DeX as screen mirroring. So you've got your choice, either use it as DeX or you can use it to, to mirror the screen to whatever you're doing. Okay, so either way, it's pretty cool, very cool. So let's now go back to, da, 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 switch to Samsung DeX. It's gonna come back up again with the screen. Once you've got that, if you haven't got a mouse, just bring this down, use your phone as a touchpad. My phone is now a touchpad, so I can use this like I would normally. Let's close that. And you can see it's a lovely bright screen um, and you can use it like a PC. So we can just go to the internet, double tap. Don't want O2, we can type in anything here. We just type in Google, enter. And you've got, all, you've got your, your basic computer. <laughs> it's no different to having a computer at home. It's just brilliant. So again, I can use the stylus. I can use the, uh, the S Pen to actually do a lot of my work here, which is brilliant. So you've pretty much got a computer. Let's close that. You can open Adobe Clip. You can do all your bits and pieces. There's so much to this, I'm not gonna go into it all now, um, but trust me, it's like having a Windows PC. So much you can do. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where to start, but all I'm gonna say is it's just super handy for me to bring this rather than my computer to this office, have the, all of this available to me. With the keyboard, I'm gonna get a Bluetooth mouse, then I can work from away from home without having to bring the PC. So DeX is very, very cool.